In our previous video, we saw how to store a DTO into Firebase from a Kotlin application, an Android application written in Kotlin, that is. In this video, we're going to see how to be informed when the data changes on the Firebase database. In other words, when an application on one device pushes data to the Firebase database, we want any other subscribed application to get information that that data have changed. So let's take a look. I'm going to start by going into our project. And we'll go right to the GPS plant activity, the onCreate function. One risk here, this onCreate function is going to get pretty long just based on everything we're stuffing in here. Nonetheless, down towards the end, I'm going to say Firebase database dot get instance. And then we're going to save that into a variable. We'll make it a val, so a final variable, Firebase database, just like so. Now from Firebase database, We'll say dot get reference, so get us a reference to the database, and we'll save that in a uh, val we'll call a reference, just like so. Now underneath this, I'm going to say uh, reference dot child. And what I'm saying here is I want to subscribe to anything under the specimens leaf. Now, why, or the specimens branch, if you will. Now, why the specimens branch? If we look up just a little bit, we see that's where we are saving our specimen DTOs. Similarly, if we look at Firebase on the web, we see that everything is being saved under the specimens branch here. So we're saying that we want to listen at that level. We could have multiple levels and we could listen at multiple levels. We're simply saying, let's listen at this level. And what I'm going to do is add a value event listener which says, tell me what happens when things change. So add value event listener. And now here I'm going to say object colon, and then we'll say value event listener, which is essentially an interface. So uh, open curly and close curly. And now uh, what we're doing is a little bit funny, and I know the syntax is funny, but value event listener is an interface. We are creating a class that implements that interface in line right here in this method call. That's called an anonymous inner class. We're assigning this anonymous inner class to object. Object is redlining now, and why is that? Let's find out. It's redlining because it says implement members. It says there are methods in the interface value event listener that I need to define in this anonymous inner class. If that all sounds confusing, not to worry. Uh, Android Studio in this object, I'll enter, implement members, and in just a moment, we'll get the, the methods that are defined on this value event listener. Okay, on canceled, on data changed, those are two that we want, so I'll go ahead and select both and choose OK. And sure enough, you see on canceled and on date changed, on data changed. On canceled, we don't have to worry too much about. On data changed is the one that we want to take a look at. What this will do is this will send us back a snapshot of all of the data under this child that we've subscribed to. In this case, it's called specimens. So it's going to send us a snapshot of all that data. So what we can do is we can take a look at that data. You see here it's passing it through as a variable of type data snapshot. Let's give the variable name something a bit more descriptive. I'll say data snapshot. Just like, so, just like so, data snapshot, data snapshot. Now I can say data snapshot dot, um, let's say dot children, like so, that'll work. And we can store this into a variable. We'll say val and we'll say children equals data snapshot dot children. Now the type is not very obvious here, but children is actually an iterable type, which means we can iterate over it. Now we can take advantage of some special syntax in Kotlin where we say children dot for each. And then we simply, instead, I'll tell you what, instead of uh, paren, we do open and close curly like so. Now what's interesting is we're essentially shaking hands with everything that's in this collection. And this is a traditional loop. It's just a Kotlin style for each loop, which means, hey, give me this collection. Let me shake hands with everything in this collection. When I'm inside of this loop, IT is a special variable. It means this is the current object that I'm shaking hands with. So if I want to show a little toast or a little notification, it gets really interesting and actually pretty easy. I say toast.make text. You've probably seen this before. 
application context will be our context. Then we can just say it or it.toString if you prefer, if you want to be a little bit more verbose. Then toast.makeText. So I'm sorry, toast.linkedLong. So this is a little different construction, and then sorry, then dot show, than if you're used to the Java looping style. This just takes a whole lot of syntax out of what would typically be a, a, a for each loop in Java. So let me snap a breakpoint there and save, and let's see what it looks like. Now I have the application deployed and I want to try it out. So I'm going to just manually change the data in Firebase, which I'm certainly allowed to do. So I can change it to Sawyer Point Park and hit enter. And as soon as I hit enter, my IntelliJ lights up orange indicating that a breakpoint is hit. So you see it made the communication from Firebase down to my application very quickly. Now I'm going to choose F9 to tell it to continue. Notice we're on this on data change function we created just a few moments ago. Now on the children, for each I'm going to press F9 each time we iterate here. We should have a total of three iterations because at the moment we have three different items in our uh, in our online database. So you see we have three different specimens here. So I'm anticipating that we'll see this toast.makeText get invoked three times. There's the first one, and the second, and the third, and done. So you see that it gets invoked for each item that we have because we're getting a snapshot of the entire set of data. Let me take off the breakpoints and let's try it again in real time. Uh, I'll bring up, just a moment, I'll bring up our uh, our database. Okay, and simultaneously I will bring up our application. And I'll tell you what, I'll try and just squeeze these together so we can see both on one screen, like so. And now the, the toast isn't going to make a whole lot of sense because I have not overridden the two-string method of specimen, but we can still get the idea. So let's come to our, uh, our, our red maple, and we're going to say Spring Grove Village, Cincinnati. And when I hit enter, take a look on the emulator and kind of take a look at the time that elapses between when I hit enter and when you see a toast pop up on the emulator. So enter and toast. You see almost immediately that toast rang up to say, hey, something has changed. And again, not a whole lot of information that's useful to the user just yet, but we got a toast to indicate that sure enough, we're able to hear when data has changed on the uh, up on the cloud. Now, one other thing I want to point out is this it.toString. Remember that is our iteration variable. In other words, that represents one of our specimen DTO objects like we see up here. So if we wanted to take this data snapshot and do something with it, if we wanted to take these specimen DTOs and trigger some kind of logic locally in the application, maybe update something or tell the user, we certainly can. There's a whole lot in this iteration variable and this entire sequence of events here that can be useful to us. So this is a look at how to retrieve data from Firebase and Kotlin. I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.